It's Grandpa Story Time. Yay! Now this story's about the Paoli Massacre. It sounds dark. And this all happened overnight. So fairly spooky. After the Battle of the Clouds, when the Americans were super low on ammo, they need to go straight to Reading Furnace. And no, it's not what it sounds like. It's not a, a furnace. It's Reading. It's... No, it's just a building that has a bunch of ammo, and, and yeah, that's how where they had to go. Because they, they needed ammo, because they were low. And the new and improved George Washington, I mean, look at this dude, he looks so much better. He leaves Brigadier General Anthony Wayne with some of the Continental Army to go attack the British in the rear. The best way to attack the British, I mean, it's a foolproof plan. But, you know, with the British camping out to drift in, they're, they're pretty hunkered down. They got security and everything. Probably camp with a bunch of Boy Scouts wondering their merit badges, though. Haha, <laughs> bet you. Anywho, here's the map of the British camping at Tredriffin. Looks amazing. Anywho, the British plan was to cross the Schuylkill River and attack Philadelphia. And this was all going to be led by this one of the, one of the scariest names. I've ever heard, I mean, come on, this is the scariest, the, the scariest name ever. It's none other than Lord Howe. <laughs> he gives me nightmares. Except that, that's what he actually looks like, but I, I don't like this guy, so I'm, I'm going to give him a makeover. There we go, much better. It's Lord Howe. Ha! It's funny. Jokes. Anywho, Hal got word that Wayne was planning a sneak attack, so he does what any good, completely sane person would do. He would re-sneak attack on the sneak attack. I mean, that's just genius. It makes perfect sense. So a little past midnight on September 21st, this is where it all begins. Hal attacks Wayne with bayonets. And those are the big... Big pointy metal things that you put at your end of your muskets to stab people with. Yeah. Now, Wayne grew up in Paoli, so he knows the land, which is perfect in war. He also sends George Washington a letter in a lot of detail, but it basically just says, hurry up. Because he, he needs help. So this guy, he, he plans a sneak attack. He plans a sneak attack on none other than General Lord Howe. I mean, this dude. But, you know, the hunter becomes the hunted by this guy. But let's just be real. If this if this was the guy you were hunting for, I would put his... I would put him on a trophy above my fireplace because that's the most gorgeous face I've seen. On the morning of the massacre, September 25th, 20th. It's a mouthful. Wayne really hopes to find the British on the move. And in this endless game of cat and mouse, the British are up. And that's bad. How plans a massacre... He, he's got his ways. But Morgan Jones, a dude who got captured by the British, overheard them talking. But his name's too long, so I'm just going to call him MJ. MJ heard the British talking after Mr. Clayton, his owner, got, let him out. He said that the British were planning a sneak attack on Wayne, but he didn't believe it. But he just upped the number of pickets and sent out more patrols just to be safe. But when you're camping in the woods with a bunch of campfires and you got all the smoke, it's kind of... Really easy for the British to find you. So Wayne has to retreat back, and for the second time, he hopes to find the British on the move. <laughs> but due to a light rainfall, they had to wrap the muskets and the ammo all in um, cloth, because they don't not do not want a repeat of the Battle of the Clouds, where everything got ruined. General Gray, he is also part of this huge sneak attack plan. What he does... It's at 10 p.m., night of the t September 20th. He tells his men, he starts his mission and tells his men to only use bayonets. As I said, that the weed pointy things at the end. He told his men to remove the flints in their guns, and that's how he got his nickname, No Flint Gray. And they also, from Tory farmers, they got the American password so they can just waltz right in their camp. Here we are, and there they go. But with the British sneakily peeping on you, two Americans on horseback saw this. They got really shocked, but luckily, they had just enough time to fire their muskets. Pew pew. Yeah, that's 
Yep, they had enough time to fire their muskets and ride back, and they tried to warn the American camps by screaming, Up, man, the British are on you, but it was too late. Most Americans died. <laughs> but General Wayne was able to port two Americans in lines, not only two, but a lot, and four cannons left, which is helpful. He tried to go find General Smallwood's help, so he started on that mission with his two very poorly lines of American troops. So the American troops had the first volley of musket fires on the British, but the muskets gave away their position with the lights. So now they were completely visible to the British, so they stormed them with their bayonets, and it was dark. <laughs> Colonel Richard Humpting had the worst of this whole deal, though. He told his second brigade to turn left. I mean, that's, that's the easiest command I've ever heard. And look at this dude. He looks insanely smart. And yet, somehow, he turns right. I mean, how? How? But he turns right straight into the bayonets of the British. And that's the end of him. <laughs> but with the Americans hiding behind campfires and also shooting volleys of musket balls, they're completely visible. One British soldier said that every man that fires was instantly put to death, which is, wow, impressive. And as the huts burned from the British, some Americans wanted to stay in instead of face their fate with bayonets. But Wayne found Smallwood not in the way he won. He ran smack dab into Smallwood, and that caused more volleys to be shot off. But they both decided to head to Westchester while sending General Washington a letter to go find his army. The final count of this was 53 Americans dead, 100 wounded, 71 captured, and of the 40 that were ca no, yeah, enough, the 71 that were captured, 40, 40 were wounded. And as the British would say, this was all in night's nice work. <laughs> Bad puns. It's, it's funny. Mm -hmm. Now the British had, this is surprising, but the British had killed men who tried to surrender. And the Americans really thought this was barbaric with all the bayonets, and it wouldn't be until Valley Forge that they were taught to fight with them. But two weeks later, the British at the Battle of Germantown, the British were scared that Wayne was going to get his revenge. But then J Colonel Humpton said, Wayne got the word that the British were coming and did nothing, so he basically framed him. Wayne demanded a court-martial to clear his name, and this whole deal... And this whole spiel deal, whatever you want to call it, lasted four days. And this dude, he was cleared, his name was cleared, and he got ranked the highest of honor. It's a ridiculously peachy ending for a story about 53 people getting murdered at 2 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> History.